Hi folks and welcome to this episode of Michael's Backyard Marina. Getting ready to drag the Starcraft out and stick it back out into the shed for a little while because we still got some cold weather and not any, a lot of fishing going on in the near future, not in this boat anyway. So I'm going to go ahead and take the opportunity to drag it out and I've got a surprise. I've got a treat. It's a boat that I picked up last year. Uh, it was in the fall and I stowed it away in the front of my other garage. And now I'm ready to get it out and start messing with it. It's a neat old boat. It's one I've never heard of before. I can't find any information on it, but we're gonna turn it into a fishing boat. Let's go take a look and see what I've found. I realized after I did the last video when I put these corners, those orange corners on my boat, I didn't show you what the tarp looks like over it. Look at that gentle curve there now. That's gonna protect that tarp from tearing. So it's gonna take a lot of abuse now, but it ain't gonna break through there. That's got a cushion and it's soft. Love it, recommend you do that. I was just getting ready to drag the old Starcraft outside and I checked the wheel bearings real quick. The one on the passenger side was good. The one on the driver's side, not good. It's black and there had water in it. The other one didn't have water in it. So naturally, if you've seen in some of my other videos, it shows you how to reinstall, uninstall and reinstall a new bearing kit. That's what I had to do to get this thing out of my shop. Anyway, that's why you check your bearings often. If you remember right, I just put in a new axle about mid last year. And that happened since mid last year. My bearing cap, I think, on the hub didn't fit as tight as it should, let some moisture in. The seal seemed to be fine. But that's why I preach, check your wheel bearings, check them often. I picked up a 14 foot fiberglass tri hull. It's a cute little boat. It's uh, five and a half feet wide. It is 14 foot long, like I said. It came without a motor, but it came with a trailer. And it's pretty solid. The floor is pretty solid. We're going to do some, uh, I think I'm going to turn this into my little bass fishing boat. Uh, since I won't need depth finders and all that, I might have a depth finder on the boat, but I'm not going to need a fish finder, so to speak. Not an expensive one anyway, especially if I'm going to do just doing uh, like shoreline fishing and, you know, topwater fishing. That's primarily what I want to use this one for. Uh, it's, a, it's a pretty neat old boat. It's clean. It's a 1972 Glass Spar. That's G-L-A-S-S-P-A-R Glass Spar. I cannot find a single picture on the internet about this particular glass bar. There are glass bars out there, but not this model, not this style. This had a little steering wheel console. My understanding is it had a 50 horse motor on it, which is, uh, I'm gonna guess it would scoot this thing right along pretty darn fast. Uh, I'm actually looking just to put a 10 horse on it because, or 9.9 .9 or 10 horse, because I wanna use it to fish in small lakes. Uh, I've got a few no wake lakes I wanna go to. I go to on a regular basis. It'd be nice just to throw this one in. As far as the flat, let's take a little walk around on this real quick and I'll show you it. Uh, the first thing I want to show you, I don't know if you guys ever knew Evan Rude actually made a trolling motor. Look at this thing. And it still steers with a foot pedal. It moves really smooth. And on the switch here, on the foot pedal, it shows it has a switch for 12 or 24 volt. Are you kidding me? This thing is ancient, and they had it set up for 12 or 24 volt then. It was called a little Evinrude Scout. I'm going to see if the darn thing works, because it works, I may just use it, because it still seems to work pretty slick as far as the movement goes. Now check out this. That is a monster running light. That's something that looks like it'd be on a ship. I mean, I put my hand on it, my whole hand. Look at that. That thing's big. Let's go ahead and look around. This platform inside here, this platform is huge. Look at the size of that. So, and it's pretty cool because 
the way this thing's set up, it's got a little bit of texture up here on the front. And there's obviously texture all over the bottom. You can stand in there. You can stand up on the bow and fish up here if you wanted. What I'm going to do is I'm probably going to take this little console out. It's cute as I'll get out. But I don't think I'm going to use it. Because it had a steering wheel and a throttle control mounted there. But I'm really, really, really leaning toward making this a tiller steer. And as you can see inside here, I'm going to try to point it out here. Right there on that wall. And over here, right there, that's a place where the wood is uh, fiberglassed into the sides where you could screw something to it. As you can see here, somebody had put a board over here on this side, but I'm gonna take that out. Uh, I think I can make something that goes up and goes under and maybe make a rod holder or something that fits in there, maybe with some pockets, something a little different, something out of wood that I can sit in there and have a little extra storage space. I measured the transom. Transom from here to here is about 19 inches, which I'm pretty sure, I gotta do a little research, but I'm pretty sure that's gonna take a long shaft outboard and not a short shaft. I had my eye on a little Honda 100. I'm not sure if it's a long shaft or short shaft. I've gotta ask the guy, see what he can tell me. But yeah, a 14 foot boat with trailer. The trailer needs some work because it's a, uh, that's a little bit uh, not cool. Somebody fabricated something together here. I'm gonna go with something a little bit better than that, obviously. But it did come with working LED lights. I'm gonna have to rewire it because the wiring job on it wasn't fantastic. It's got these weird little, let's get down underneath here and show you. Weird little roller style. Uh, I'm not a big fan. I think what I'm gonna do is redo this with a bunk style. I like the bunk styles. And I'll keep a center roller up at the front there to guide the boat on. But uh, those tires, when I picked this trailer up last year, you were swear they were square. They have been flat spotted for sitting so long. But I drug it about 90 miles home. It made it. The wheel bearings ran cool. So I'm, I'm guessing the wheel bearings might be okay on this one. But no guarantees. But uh, I think we're going to re-carpet for sure. Got plenty of room back here for a little gas tank to sit, sit underneath this area. Battery to sit back here if I need a battery. But if I just have a little, little pull start motor, I won't need much of a battery. Uh, I'll have a deep cycle battery for running my uh, trolling motor, and that way I can run the lights off of that. But yeah, that's a that's the long and the short of it. Used to have it looks like a bimini at one point in time with a couple of tie down hooks in here, one there, one up here. Uh, chances are, if I'm going to use this for fishing, I'm not put a bimini back on it because. It is kind of nice for this old boy to get out of the sun. Take a look at the, the front end. Whoops, I got my finger in the way like an idiot. You can see like that, it's like a, it's like a shallow tri hull, but it should be pretty stable on the water. It looks like it should be pretty stable on the water. That way I can go out in a little bit bigger water if I want. Feel pretty, pretty ugh, can't even talk, pretty secure. It's got semi, you know, fairly deep sides on it. But I just love the amount of flat floor space this thing gets. I mean, it's it's an open, once I get all these seats out of here, it's an open design. And uh, i got plenty of walking around room. And if I want to take a nap, I can just lay down in here. It's long enough for me to lay down in, no problem. So, if you guys got any comments or suggestions... Let me know if you've seen a boat like this before. And uh, this style, like I said, um, the guy told me it had a 50 horse on it. And I believe it can handle 50. Bad part is, I don't know for sure, because this plate, all the information's gone off of it. I can't make heads or tails of any of it. The only thing I do have to go off of is it had a four on there, 
So I'm assuming that can only handle four passengers, which is more than enough for a boat this size. And uh, obviously the trailer is going to need some work. It's got one heck of a winch on it. I think that might still work. It's going to need some new strapping on there. The trailer tongue jack is straight out of Noah's Ark there. It's a straight up and down gear. It's weird. And we're going to need a, a new copper on here as well. But uh, it's banged a few things here and there. But for 70, 1972, that's an old boat. It's held its shape pretty decent. I think I can get uh, some more years of use out of it. Looks like we're going to need a new light back here too. Looks like somebody got some silicone and did some really interesting stuff there, but that's easy enough to replace. But uh, it's got these neat little levered uh, tie downs that are spring loaded. I kind of like that. I might have to redo those and make them better than they were, but the same thing. Looks like this came out of Moline boat motor oven room sales and service east moline illinois there's some larson industries i guess that's a serial number on its plate there anyway you guys got any suggestions it even came with an old steel anchor up front with rope but uh if you got any suggestions of what you'd like to see me do with this uh I'm not going to repaint it. I'm thinking of I'm trying to come up with a name for it. Right now I'm calling it the banana. Since it's yellow like a banana. If you guys got a better name for it, let me know. Once you guys come up with a name for it, or I stick with the banana, we're going to put that right on the back of the boat. And we can put it right here or right here. So. Well. I don't know what else to say about this one. But it's uh, it's going to be a little project. Now, I may not get it on the water this year, but it sure would be nice to. All it's going to take is a little elbow grease. And uh, I think I can make this thing shine like a diamond. We're going to do a little test polish here. Hard to appreciate how dull this really is. The camera don't catch it all. bad. Gotta see a little bit of the before. You can see the after. And you can kind of see where I stopped here. See how dull that is and you see how that gets a pretty good little shine to her. I think we can make her look pretty sharp for an old boat. Alright. That's one thing on the list of items that need to be done. Well folks we're going to call this episode one of the, we'll call it the banana boat. Episode one of the bringing it back to life and getting it on the water and catching the first fish out of it. Uh, not much to go on about this video. This isn't much of a how to video. This is more of a, this is my project video and we'll work on this and you'll follow the episodes as I put them together throughout the summer. And uh, we'll see how this thing turns out, and we'll see what kind of motor I end up on it, or uh, that ends up on the back of this thing. I, like I said, I want to do a 9.9, but uh, she's a little bit of a beast. It's kind of nice because it's going to be smaller than my big boat to drop in some of these smaller ponds, and uh, hopefully catch us some large bound bass. So, folks, uh, get out there and do something fun. Uh, I think this boat, I didn't tell you how much I paid for it. For boat and trailer, I gave 150 bucks. I can't complain too much. A trailer's worth 150 bucks all by itself. Uh, just the lights on the back of it are worth $39 on their own. 36, I think, at Harbor Freight. So uh, even if I parted everything out, I could get my money back. But I think this is worth uh, taking the time and uh, let's put it together. Let's make us a good little boat out of it and take it fishing because 
that's something fun and that's what I like to do. This is gonna be a fun project because it's not gonna cause a, a lot of major rework. Uh, it's just basically bolt on a few things and I might give me a little Garmin fish finder. Uh, those are the little guys that are about 99 bucks and throw that on here so I can at least have me a depth finder if nothing else. And uh, that's about all I got to say about that. Well, folks, stay tuned. More to come. Uh, still got to get that rinker boat in here. I want to get uh, see if I can get that engine running on it and make that project move along as well because that might be my next super duper fishing boat because it's a really nice boat, really clean on the hull. Uh, just needs a some blank slate, kind of like this is on the interior where I can get more done or get it, fix it up the way I want and not have to go with what was already there. So folks, get out there and do something fun. I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, like I said, if you got any inf information on a boat like this, send it to me. I'd greatly appreciate it. Uh, it's a mystery right now. I've done a lot of Google searching and come up empty handed for this style of boat and what it really looked like in its heyday. Uh, I'm guessing a lot like this, except it had a motor on the back. But I uh, appreciate you watching. Hit the like button if you like what you've been seeing. Hit that uh, notification bell if you want to be notified every time I release another video. You'll get an email or a notification on your phone. And uh, also, subscribe. But most of all, hit that thumbs up button. Hit the like. I appreciate that if you do that. That uh, helps me out a lot there. Uh, get out there and do something fun, folks. Michael, out. So let me give you a little bit of the particulars on this little bit of a find I've got. And then the heater kicks on.